what are you working on now? Christmas is coming. Uh, it's it's always a time of year of excitement in the studio because um, you know people come into my shop and they've been doing it for 32 years, collecting my work. Um, and and I do a range of, of functional. You know, I still make beautiful coffee mugs and wine goblets, for example, um, and I do more decorative pieces uh, like some of my canoe vessels and, you know, bird baths, items for the garden, display bowls, large landscape plates. So at Christmas time, I try to have a really good balance of, of functional items, which make wonderful, wonderful gifts, uh, and also some some outstanding one-of-a-kind pieces that might might become someone's premier gift to a spouse or or quite often we get spouses in picking out a piece together and it's a gift to each other well where can we find your work my showroom uh, and studio my home are in the hockley valley just north and east of orangeville uh, we tend north to hockley road and three kilometers east to the farmhouse pottery i when i moved to the hockley valley i i i thought about renaming the studio having started in the farmhouse uh, on the fifth side road and i couldn't ever think of a better reason than why would i change it? it those were my roots i'm loyal to my roots fiercely loyal to family and friends and so the farmhouse pottery is still my studio name and you can find my location on my website it's pacepottery.com and we're open every day uh, and certainly every day up until Christmas. And we have some events that will be posted on our website in the next week or so. Now, as the artist of our own lives here at Art On Air, we're always looking for ways to embrace the arts more in life. Could you give us uh, some inspiration? You know, I have a lot of, a lot of people who collect my work um, who are sometimes shy to use my pottery. And I think in using art and interacting with art, um, even, even, non, even a, like a two-dimensional painting, you know, quite often we will we'll hang it in one place and it will be there forever. And you know, I like to stir things up a little bit. I like to move my art around in my world. I like to use my pots. And you know, one day I might break a coffee mug. I think that's a more valuable experience than sitting it on a, on a display shelf and not interacting with it. So, you know, I collect art. I have um, a real interest in uh, Inuit soapstone carvings, which I collect. And um, I, I like buying art from artists whom, whom I know and, and, and that makes it personal and private and intimate and, and I like all that and, and I like living with it, utilizing it, um, moving it around, stirring it up. You know, that's what I would encourage people to do more is to get more comfortable with their art and find different ways to interact with it. What wonderful advice. It's so true. Moving things around and I've even spoke to people that have collections that they rotate the art on their walls or they move things around like you say. And uh, keeps it fresh, and it gives us inspiration. I also like what you said about having your pieces be the memory or the reminiscence of northern Canadian uh, landscape to bring into someone's home. I think, you know, connecting with art in that way um, is so uplifting and really beneficial. Yeah, and, and I think the Canadian story, the Canadian landscape is, is something that we've all grown up with, you know. Um, that's partly what's defined our country. And a lot of our, um, our wilderness canoers who join us up north, they, they may not be artists, but we invite them to write. We invite them to write a piece of poetry, write a song, write a story. Uh, and we might share this on the last night of a canoe trip around a big bonfire on the banks of the Mackenzie River. And I think people surprise themselves with the words that they find. I mean, most people say, gee, you know, I haven't written a poem since grade five, you know, you know, English at, at, you know, Aaron Public School. And they shock themselves into finding words that are experiential, having just done, you know, a 10 or 12 day expedition, uh, and they're powerful and they're personal. Do you find that in the North when you're out there that there is a deep intrinsic peace that comes about you? Well, not only about me, but uh, uh, watching people. You know, we've now um, guided 750 folks from Ontario uh, on wilderness trips to the far north. And, for example, this summer, Lynn had uh, one group of 14 women uh, on the Yukon River paddling down to Dawson City in the wake of the Klondike Gold Rush. And, and um, I mean, many of these women, you know, were all the women were in their 50s and 60s. And it was an enormous step out for them to enter into this wilderness journey. Many of them hadn't been in a canoe for years, or if ever. And so, um, you know, through a lot of coaching, a little bit of training, you know, we help these people step into a, a powerful wilderness experience. And it's, it's both a powerful group experience, so the girls come together, they, you know, they support each other, they get the fire up, get the tents pitched. 
you know, laugh a lot, you know, fumble a little bit with, with gear, but they work it out. But it's also a time, um, you know, under, under the endless Arctic sky where, you know, there's no darkness and, and the big, big sky country. I think, I think people find a different sense of themselves and, and they, they review and revisit what's important in the world and, and at this stage of their lives. And, and uh, you know, it's about shared adventures and shared experiences and, you know, not hiding behind the mask of, of you know, a corporate position or, or you know, um, something that is, um, is less believable than just a spectacular wilderness scene or, you know... Or, or the rush of the world. Exactly. The, you know, the expectations exactly. that are constantly on us every day. Yeah. And then to be able to be there on the river and nothing else, just the river. Uh, a neat thing that's happened, um, we've been running these wilderness trips for 18 summers now, and we, we, we almost have come to expect it now, that in the wake of five or six expeditions that we offer each summer, several of our trippers will come home and make a profound life course correction. They'll quit a job. They'll start a business. They'll move out of the city into the country, or they'll move out of the country into the city. Take a sabbatical. Unbelievable choices uh, in midlife that, that have come out of left field right in the heels of a wilderness journey. You know, a, a body of work. I took a group of artists to the north for a 10-day um, painting expedition years ago, and, and we put together an expedition uh, in the wake of that trip you know, called Spell of the Yukon. It was an awesome project, and it, it had legs. It, it, it continues to inspire and influence. So we know that what we're doing in the wilderness is really important, and it's important to us because we, we have a lot of knowledge and a lot of expertise, and it's something that Lynn and I do together. I mean, my studio work is, is more private, more personal. Lynn becomes a support person in the studio. But on the wilderness trips, we guide together, and we guide separately. Um, our young son Taylor, who's 20 now, is also a river guide and works with us. And um, this summer we built uh, some infrastructure in the north, in the Northwest Territories, uh, a new building um, that will act as a wilderness uh, outfitting base of operations in Norman Wells on the banks of the Mackenzie River. And from our new center, it's a log building, uh, we will now be able to offer um, you know, more support for our trips that launch into the Mackenzie Mountains and up into the Arctic Tundra. And so uh, that, and, and actually that building will also become an art gallery. You know, we'll, we'll have artist work hanging there, Inuit carvings, some of my own studio work, um, all there closer to the wilderness and connecting with that energy. Al, that is just so inspirational. It makes me want to get in a canoe and head out <laughs> into the north. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today here at Art on Air. Thank you for coming in and joining with us. It's just been great. It's been great to come home to Aaron.